Your Creative Push, episode 58. And if five people or millions of people see it, does it matter in the end? It just matters to you. Welcome to Your Creative Push, the podcast that pushes you to pursue your creative passions. I'm your host, Youngman Brown. My guest today is Brian Distilio. Brian is a two-time Sports Emmy Award-winning associate producer for ESPN Films. His work includes documentaries like 30 for 30, 30 for 30 Shorts, and SEC Storied, and the ESPY Awards show each year. Upcoming this year, Brian is producing a 30 for 30 that will premiere at the Cleveland Film Festival. And Brian is also one of my best friends (laughs) and my former roommate in college, and he's gotten me through a a lot of things, so hopefully maybe he can give us a push today as well. Brian, how's it going? Maybe can you fill in some gaps about your uh, personal life? Sure. I mean, I graduated about eight years ago from that little college that we both went to. That college that we know and love so well. Um, that we love and, and we boast about. Um, <laughs> I don't know when the last time we've both been there, but uh, certainly looking forward to our 10-year anniversary in a couple of years. So yeah, I'm a uh, Married uh, in Connecticut and uh, looking forward to talking today about uh, my creative push. Can you maybe take us back to, um, so you do video editing and I remember back in college, I I started in some of your uh, earlier uh, masterpieces uh, for for your different classes that you're doing. Can you maybe take us back there um, or even earlier when you first kind of got into like video editing and, uh, you know, making movies and stuff like that? Sure. Uh, So... It was probably eighth grade, summer of eighth grade, at this little camp that was free called FMEC, Filmmakers Educational Cooperative or something like that. Uh, it was a free camp, and they they gave you the tools necessary to actually produce, edit, shoot short films. So I went there as a little eighth grader along with my buddy. So we both kind of started there. And we we did everything. We we shot, we wrote scripts, we edited on this iMac, this big bulky iMac. It was cool, it was new, on Avid. We never done any of this stuff before. And and it's not like this today, but back then it was only us doing this, it felt like. It was it was coming out of nowhere because no one had the money to spend on all this equipment. So it was great for us because we had the chance to actually do these cool things um and they provided that platform for us and yeah i started there and and it just stayed with me through high school didn't really dive into it that much in high school i know there were other platforms that i could have done it but i didn't um but decided that i wanted to be my major as a tv film major and you're right i mean you start in some of my my films there uh <laughs> And that, that's what's great about filmmaking. It's like a collaborative effort. Um, it's not just you and you're able to bring your friends in. You're able to get ideas from them. And so I cherish those moments when, you know, I would pick up a camera and we'd go out and we shoot a little scene and, you you know, you guys were always there to help. And that's what was great. Um, and that's what I remember. Uh, and then from there, uh, I was on the lacrosse team. So I would make lacrosse highlight reels. So. That was really, I think, when I got in that creative mode and just stayed up late because I wanted to work on these things. And only 30, 40 people saw them at the end, but it was something I cared about, something I wanted to make great every year, the seniors. I wanted them to feel good about the year. And so I got the tools back in eighth grade. But I started that creative process really with those highlight reels every year. Um, and would you find that at ESPN that you're kind of using the same um, processes and like the skills that you learned back when you're like kind of messing around? Absolutely. Uh, I think those same core principles apply to what I do every day at ESPN. Certainly, it's a grind every day. Um, sometimes, I, I mean, I love what I do, but you got to grind things out. You got to be able to problem solve. Uh, You got to come up with some unique solutions for some problems that you face every day. So I think I absolutely learned that while I was in college doing those silly little reels and 
there was a class I remember in college that ran overnight. The shoot ran long and we did not uh, leave until five in the morning. So I will always remember that because within a couple of weeks on the job, you know, getting out of college, that was me. It was like, hey, are you OK to stay till two, three in the morning? And you, yes. I mean, I've done this. I know I, I could do this. Let's do this. So it uh, it applies very much to what I do. Yeah, and I think that that whole like kind of staying up late is something that especially people that don't have like you're lucky enough to have a job where you're doing something, you know, that interests you that you that you love. Um, and so for other people that kind of have a another boring job that they do all day, and then when they get home and it's kind of tough for them to have to like grind it out. What advice, aside from kind of like staying up and like <laughs> losing sleep, uh, do you have any other advice for them to, um, you know, maybe continue to push and pursue their creative passions? Yes. Uh, working working a full-time job, which which I did when I was doing freelance PA work a couple of years ago, I certainly had to find time to be creative. I was working a customer service job, you know, a nine to five customer service job, but at night, I needed to find that time and I needed to find those moments where I can create, where I could be satisfied with what I'm doing and I could, I could actually enjoy my work. And, but it doesn't come, it doesn't come easy. It really doesn't come easy, but I think planning will help it. Like, Hey, this weekend, I'm going to do all these things, but I really need to find time to do this project that's been on my mind. It's a script I really want to write, or it's it's this thing I really want to shoot. No one's ever going to see it, but it's 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 something that has been going through my mind. So I would certainly suggest you just plan the time to do it. It's gonna even if it doesn't come out so well, you're gonna learn from it, and you're gonna redo it, and you're gonna find ways to make it better. And eventually, you'll learn from it. Yeah, I think that idea of like something being on your mind. It's been a theme of, of this show. Um, something a lot of people have talked about and myself included, you have this thing that's like on your brain, that's like nagging at you. And until you kind of do it, you'll either like die (laughs) and regret not doing it, or, you know, you'll just get it done at some point. What's been something that's like been on your mind that you've accomplished that you would consider like one of your best creative moments? Sure. It's actually, I mean, the thing that I've been working on for for the very first time I'll be able to produce a 30 for 30 and this 30 for 30 has is directed by my boss which we have a great working relationship so he's always given me a little bit of work to do on it you know initially like hey do you really want to go you want to go in on this do you do you want to help out on this I've always said yes it's now accepted to the Cleveland Film Festival at the end of March it's called Believe Land. It's on the 50 Years of Misery of Cleveland Sports. And I have to do my daily tasks, but little by little, he's giving me more and more and more and more where, you know, I'm in the edit room. I'm, I'm cutting scripts with him. I'm, I'm, you know, it's on my mind constantly and cutting a trailer for it, you know, and, and you know, using Avid, going back to those days of lacrosse highlight reels, just sitting in a room for hours after after work, uh, you know, as I'm just cutting this together, really thinking, oh, hey, you know, there's this issue here, but we can solve it this way. And I think, you know, it, it, there's some great moments when, when you're just, you're going through everything and you just step back and say, hey, we just can't solve this. And, and you step back, you take a break, you, you go back and, then it's like, oh wait, there's this bite. There's this really sound, the really good sound bite we could put here, or this really good footage we could put here. You know, those are little triumphant moments. You'll never know that, you know, watching the film later on. But there's some really good moments every day where you're you're solving those little issues. And certainly, working at ESPN is a collaborative effort. But I feel like even if you're doing some things on your own, you're going to need other people to work with and you're going to find those friends and and maybe not so much friends, but you're going to find your coworkers uh, that you're going to help with their projects and they're going to help with your projects. And I can only say so much about that. It's not It's not so much what you know, it's who you know. And making those relationships will go a long way in any field that you're working in. 
Yeah. And I think for, you know, you work with the team, but I think for people who want to uh, do some individual art, I think, like you said, collaboration is like really important and, you know, finding somebody to maybe critique your work, um, somebody who is further along down the road than you are is really important. Not somebody who will just kind of like, you know, kiss your ass basically and tell you, right. oh, it's great. Like just putting it on Facebook, of course, everybody's just going to like it. Um, but nobody's going to give you that actual critique. So I think it, it is important to kind of seek out, you know, uh, not, not even an expert in the field, but just somebody who, you know, will give you honest feedback well, right. um, and- if you're trying to pursue it individually. Sorry. No, I was going to say, and and people have this negative connotation against corporate, which is, you know, ESPN Phillips is corporate, but what if someone came to you, Youngman Brown, and said, you know, I can get your podcast, I could pay for it all, you know, you can work and do that as a full-time job, and I can get you a half a million listens to every podcast, what would you say? I'd say thank you very much. <laughs> right. And so then Sign they start up. saying, okay, well, you can't swear in it. And you say, well... Mm-hmm. All right, that's fine. That's not who I am. You know, I'll, I'll listen to your feedback here and there. And and then what if they said, okay, every time you bring on a documentary filmmaker, your ratings go down. You can't do that anymore. Mm. So, like, you're going to have to say, well, that won me podcast of the year. You know, that that won me an award. You're going to have your reasons for doing things, and they're going to have their reasons. It's gonna, always going to make the product better. I firmly believe that. So, you know, Youngman Brown, if you find that sponsor to help you pay for everything, I say you go for it. I think you'll love it. <laughs> all right good <laughs> well that's a little bit of the ways down the way but if sure. i could you know eventually do that and quit my job that would be the nuts <laughs> right is that what you're ultimately looking for is to make this your well everything? it's yeah right now it's like a second full-time job so it's definitely stressing me out a bit but it's like been worth it and it's probably the happiest i've been in a while you know like you said like you know people don't see like the things that go behind the scenes but then you know what you did and it makes it all worth it. Sure. And going back to like what you're saying about all the things that people don't really know and nobody will know except for you, that harkens back to like that idea that you have to love what you do because you are the only person that's going to see that and you're the only person that's going to like, you know, be in love with the process of doing it. So it's really important to love what you do. Absolutely. And, you know, Facebook, Twitter, you know, Snapchat, people like to say what they're doing and they want it to be positive. They want you to know they're doing great, but they, they're not going to show those those moments of stressful resistance or moments that, that you know, bring them down. Um, so only you are going to really know, you know, what those are and, and they're going to make you um, who you are. You're going to fail. Things are going to fail. And you're going to pick those up and, and you're going to learn from it because not everything can be a major motion picture movie. Certainly if you're an independent filmmaker, not everything's going to go to Cannes or you know South by Southwest and, and win the award. Some of them are really good ideas and just never get the eyes on them. And some of them get the praise that maybe shouldn't. So you may fail, you may do things that, that no one sees, but it's ultimately it's what you learn from them and, and, and what you can pull from them. That will be the greatest triumph. For sure. Um, how, how close to finished are you with, uh, your 30 for 30? So we're in the, the, the final week of, of editing and hopefully going to post and, uh, adding all the graphics. So I'm really proud of this one as I think, uh, a a lot of people are going to like this. I think Cleveland's going to love this film. Uh, that's where we are now when you have, big projects like this i know it's kind of like a an ebb and flow like some days you're super busy when you're like doing a particular project and then i'm sure some days are not as busy when you don't have as much going on but especially when the like when you do have a lot on your plate what is like your formula for balancing your time sure when when there's a lot to do you have to pick those days and half days to make sure you're doing everything you know you need to plan Again, firm believer of planning because you may need to work on a certain film Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, another film. And, you know, so you're you're going to need to figure out your schedule, that balance and things will come up. Hey, can you go film this interview in two days in California? And you're going to go, OK, I can do this. So I certainly take this out of my week. Even when you're in California, you're thinking about the other projects you're doing. So 
when you're multitasking, it, it takes a lot of planning. So you're prepared for those moments when things will go wrong or things aren't going quite as planned. So you can make sure everything does get done. And then what happens when shit hits the fan and, you know, things do go wrong and perhaps your your plan isn't quite as solid as you thought it might have been? Well, a lot of my job, you know, in the last few years have been like this quality control problem solver. Um, people would come to me kind of, hey, this is happening. Can you fix it? How do we fix it? So it's stressful when someone, you know, sends you an email and, and things aren't going right. You could certainly blow up and, you know, shut down. But I find if you, if you just, you know, you take your deep breath, step back, uh, you can solve that. You know, my worst moments are probably when things go to air that have misspellings in them. And I was supposed to catch that. No matter what we do, we want to be accurate. Mm-hmm. You don't want, I don't want to lose my reputation. ESPN Films doesn't want to lose its reputation just because of a misspelling or things are not accurate. We're always constantly double checking, triple checking things, facts, making sure they are correct because as a documentary filmmaker, you know, the movie could be, you know, stylistic in one way or where you could do graphics or shoot in, you know, these kind of cameras. But if you're not accurate, people aren't going to watch it. People are going to dismiss you as being inaccurate. And uh, that's certainly one thing you'll never want. Who is your greatest inspiration? I think my greatest inspiration is probably other filmmakers like John Hawk, who we've worked with, and Alex Gibney. Um, Alex Gibney did the uh, Scientology documentary, Going Clear. You know, just watching not so much sports documentaries, but other documentaries that incite social change or in- incite these, you know, it's kind of like sets the world on fire, this making a murderer, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, it was... um the jinx love the jinx the jinx you know six months ago it was the jinx and everyone was talking about it and why why was everyone talking about it you know we're trying to you know you figure that out um you watch it you certainly learn from it but you watch these documentaries and and that that inspires me to do what they do we just had a you know 80 uh, the 85 bears documentary i watch it and and in awe sometimes just and the music and the and the editing, you're like, okay, if they could do that, I'm gonna learn how to do that too. Yeah, I think that's important. No matter what the art is, is to kind of like immerse yourself in like the things that you love to continue to like try to be inspired. I just had Thomas Dodd on the show, who's a uh, photographer, and he is awesome. But he talks about how like anytime he's feeling like good about himself or like a little bit cocky. <laughs> he'll go and look at like his favorite artists just that he feels shitty about himself <laughs> again to like kind of like yeah. humble himself i think that's a, a pretty pretty good lesson absolutely and on the flip side you can get wrapped up and saying, oh i can never do this why even try you need to watch them and say i'm good but i'm not them i i need you know i need to work on it i need to do more to be better yeah absolutely i think it's great advice yeah i think that's a good sign too if because if you're kind of complacent where you're like, oh, I'm just as good as him, you are you probably suck. And like you're probably – you have a bad like um, read on your own skills. I think it's – you should always have that. Like no matter where you are in your career, you should always have that like that fear that you suck. <laughs> yeah, and you can't be close-minded because it's going to hurt you in the end. You know, the more you are open-minded to – you may not like everything that people say, but – the more you are open minded, uh, the the better you'll be. Cool. All right, Brian. It's time for uh, the final push, and this is where I ask you to reach through the microphone, <laughs> grab the shoulder of somebody that you've already like really inspired today, and give them that final push into finally doing the creative act that they want to do. All right. So you've had some fantastic people on this podcast. A lot of people have probably quoted some great people, but I'm going to quote. Shia LaBeouf and say, just do it. Just do it. I don't know if he actually said that, but he said... Yeah, I think he screamed it. (laughs) He screamed it (laughs) in front of a green screen. Just do. Uh, There's no shame in in, in just grabbing that camera, grabbing your friends, and go film. There's no excuses. There's just... We have everything we need now. We have an iPhone. 
that could shoot 4K. And many people don't know what 4K is. That looks better than some of the stuff I shoot on a, on a great camera. So you'll make mistakes. You'll, you'll learn from them. Embrace the mistakes. Find ways around them. You've failed in the past. You've maybe felt the fear of, of hey, maybe I'm not good enough. Uh, you felt that fear. But you grab that camera. You do it. You edit. Whatever it may be, uh, you'll feel better about it. I really think you'll feel good about what you do. And you can be happy about it. And if five people or millions of people see it, does it matter in the end? It just matters to you. Yeah, that's good, man. You gave me goosebumps. Thank you. Are they goosebumps or goose pimples? I don't know. People say goosebumps. I never heard. I don't like the term goose pimples. I, I feel like I've only read, like in books, people talk about goose pimples. I've never they, heard anybody actually like say goose pimples. Books? Like, maybe, uh, maybe, or British, maybe Tom Sawyer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. anyway um thank you so much brian for coming on the show and giving us that push today thank you young man it's been my pleasure to speak to you yay that was so much fun um this was a really special episode for me um to be able to talk to brian because i remember those days back in college where he would be working on those those highlight reels that he mentioned for the lacrosse team he'd be staying up late at night and he wouldn't go out uh, he just kind of lock in this zone, um, put his headphones on and just edit, edit, edit. And I'd be like, Brian is such a boring roommate. I'd be like, come on, Brian, let's go out and party or come on, Brian, you haven't eaten in days or come on, Brian, let's, let's have a pillow fight or, or, or anything just to get him away from working on those damn highlight reels. But he'd just be so locked in until it was done absolutely perfectly. And, uh, I don't know if I ever, understood that until i found myself locked into editing these episodes you know not just piecing together the music and pulling out the quotes for the show notes page but editing my guest track to make them sound as as good as possible um not just so that their message could be clearly conveyed but so that they're happy with the experience and proud of their creative push Uh, like brian mentioned wanting to make the seniors on the lacrosse team feel good about the year it's much easier to lock in and really care about what you're doing creatively because you know it's going to affect someone even if you know only 30 or 40 people are ever going to see it in its lifetime so yeah thank you brian for just being a huge inspiration to me even though i didn't realize kind of what you were doing um and being locked into that kind of personalized creativity where it doesn't matter that the huge amount of work that you're putting into something isn't going to necessarily be seen by a large audience because the audience that is going to see it cares so much about it um, and just for helping me realize that and of course for being such a great friend so if you are listening to this on the 31st of march which is when it airs i am on my way to Cleveland to go check out the premiere. I can't wait to see it and see what Brian was able to create for the city of Cleveland with Believe Land. And you can check out the show notes page at yourcreativepush.com slash Brian. On there will be everything we talked about today, as well as a trailer for Believe Land. And you can watch Believe Land when it premieres on ESPN on May 14th at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And I'll give you a reminder for that as the day comes closer. And since I have a minute, I'd like to give a few iTunes ratings and review shout outs to people who gave us five star reviews on iTunes. Eddie Donato said, get the motivation to do what you want to do. I love this podcast for giving me motivation to push on to do things in my daily life. Definitely check it out. Brain Keith said, thank you. I discovered your podcast a couple of weeks ago and wow, I began making art a little over a year and a half ago, and I wish your podcast had been around to inspire me. There are an infinite amount of moments of self-doubt, self-pity, loss of confidence, etc. in the path of an artist, and hearing these artists speak brings me back down to earth. Your guests and your questions are fantastic, and it helps me normalize my own art world superheroes into real, regular people. And NYTom88 said, We all need a push. It can be hard to put to words sometimes what it means to discover creativity and inspire others to find their creativity. Youngman is skilled at pulling out the magic from each guest to help inspire the listeners to push their own creativity. As someone who likes to write songs, this podcast will definitely be in my essentials. Thanks for the great show. So thank you everybody for those kind iTunes ratings and reviews. You're doing the nicest thing to help 
to push this show, and I, I really do appreciate it. On tomorrow's show, we have Bo Belanger. You know, I, I've had scripts in the past where, like, I get a note and I from, like, you know, a writer on Good Luck Charlie say about one of the pilot I've written, and I just... I just uh, didn't sound right, and I was trying to work it through, and I would spend weeks just like, oh, I don't know if it doesn't seem right to do it the way he's talking about it. I want to do it this way. And, it, you know, you, you, you kind of begin to, to trust yourself a little bit more. Um, and it never gets easy, but it gets kind of easier. Bo is a really talented screenwriter who has dabbled in a lot of different things aside from screenwriting. He created his own Kickstarter campaign and made this this new show called Pearly Gates, which is a cartoon and it's <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, it's, if you like Family Guy, um, you, you're gonna love this show. But it was really interesting to talk to him about um, since he does most of his screenwriting in children's shows, um, the way that he is able to kind of express himself and do this other thing that is definitely not a children's show. So a fascinating conversation with him tomorrow if you need that push. Um, But today, I hope that you were inspired to get your work done. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for subscribing. Turn your phone off. Turn your podcast player off. Go and do your art. That would make me the happiest person in the world because that is literally the reason that I created this podcast. So go and get it done. And if you need a push again tomorrow, we will be here for you. Well, I'll be in Cleveland, but the episode will be ready for you to go. (laughs) Have a great day. I love you, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.